Hey, greetings YouTube, Performance Reviews here. And it's no secret that I have tested my share of cordless, bagless stick vacuums over the years. And it's also no secret as a technician, I'm really not a fan of making the motor smaller where it can overheat, having to hold the motor, and then really dramatically reducing the size of the dirt cup. And this is a formula that uh, I think Dyson really first made popular. But you, you see people buying these, and this is probably the most popular segment of vacuum cleaners today. And any of these bagless stick vacuums, they're really all about the same. There's not a whole lot of difference between them. Almost all of them are underpowered. There's some exceptions to that rule. Uh, almost all of them have a spinning brush roller which is not suitable for hard floor pickup. And the reason the spinning brush roller has become so popular with cordless stick vacuums is because they're making these things underpowered or they're by default, they're putting them on the lower power setting so they can publish higher battery numbers, higher runtime. So they're making up for it by having a brush rotate and pick up some of the dirt. Well, when you have a low power, machine in a rotating brush that means it's going to spit stuff out of the vacuum not so good now no matter which one of these i pick up and i'm going to superimpose here the dyson uh, v11 v10 i've reviewed them both doesn't matter really the difference between them i think the uh, v11 is easier on the ears it's got a lower decibel rating so that would be reason you'd pick it over the v11 but you really you wouldn't pick it if you're watching this video probably so you know this uh lg is probably the most powerful one i found you know it's got over 100 inches of water lift in terms of vacuum it's very very powerful uh but again the problem is it's got a spinning brush and like all of these up here it has its own custom fitting which means it cannot be adapted to use a standard floor tool and that is a problem now some of the other ones i've tested that i don't have out here like i said the v11 the v10 i've tested the mila triflex uh there's another one i've tested that i sent to a friend i forget what the name of it, it was a no-name company i've tested every single hoover uh i don't have video of all the hoovers i've tested but i've tested them all on the bench uh and like i said these all have the same problems now i want to start off by comparing a regular floor tool with a straight suction small motor machine you know, with a little bit of technical uh, data. So again, if you're vacuum shopping, I hope this helps you. But typically when we're cleaning hard floor and I've got some cat litter on my hard floor, you don't have a spinning brush. You just have a straight suction brush with some bristles to make sure it makes contact with the floor. Or you have something like this. This is on a Mila, but this could be numerous other vacuums that have the same attachment. Or again, you have bristles and then it flips up for straight suction on area rugs. And this is a nice wheel. So let's pick up the cat litter and see how that goes. Well, not only did I pick it up, uh, but it didn't kick anything around. It literally just sucked it in the vacuum cleaner. And again, I'm using a Mila for this, but it, the vacuum is irrelevant what I'm using. As long as it's a straight suction machine, there's no rotating brush, and it picked it up just fine. That's because this plug-in vacuum, and there's also a couple cordless that are this strong, has enough suction. It can, through a 12-inch area, suck up that cat litter doesn't need any help from a motor spinning or and catching the stuff up and then throwing it into the tube you're going to do the same test with a few different stick backs and you're going to you're going to notice a common theme uh, so first up is the romney I hope I didn't permanently just scratch my bare floor by doing that. Uh, it doesn't matter if this is a fluffy brush roll or not. You see that it just kind of pushed it around and scattered it. Didn't really clean it. All right. 
Let's try the Hoover. Oh my gosh, there's so much cat litter on my floor still. I would say maybe a third of it is gone. So if what I was saying was right, that a spinning brush is a problem, let's try this cordless Henry that has the same tool as the Mila and enough power. Oh my gosh, there's so much to pick up here. So I pushed one piece aside, there's no denying that. But the majority of that was actually picked up by a straight suction nozzle on a machine that's cordless. Now if you are in Europe and you're watching this, this is gonna be kind of review for you, but a lot of Americans don't have experience of what a straight suction cleaner can do on carpet. So no spinning brush on the end here. Let's see what it can do on carpet. And if there's big stuff, you can pick it up and pull it back. Again, no spinning brush works just fine. Okay, let's say you have mostly carpets and area rugs. Spinning brush like this LG would be really nice to have, right? Turn it on its highest setting, make this fair. So arguably, I vacuumed way more than you would on that same little spot. And you can see most of that is stuck in the bottom of this cordless stick vacuum. Well, I vacuumed very thoroughly with the most powerful stick vacuum I've seen so far. I've got the Zero G, which recently took a trip in the dishwasher. And I've got a brand new bag on there. Why this isn't scientific. So keep that in mind, this is not a science lab. Let's see what the Zero G picks up right there. show what was in the bag. It's not a lot, but there's fuzzy, all sorts of stuff. There's some embedded dirt, all sorts of stuff that I had already put down. And you can see. So that's one small area that we did that with. If you vacuumed with cordless stick vacuum, that was your only vacuum, you would leave a ridiculous amount of dirt in your carpet right now. And you you'd end up with just a trashed carpet and a dirty house. I'm not sure which is worse. I'll let you decide. Talk about emptying the V11. Now with the normal vacuum, just take the bag, throw it away, go put a new one in. There isn't a vacuum out there that the bags aren't under 30 bucks for a year's worth of bags. Some, a lot of them are under even $20 for a year's worth of bags. Easier than some of the first generations of Dyson. But you're going to empty this. And you can see, this is why we're outside. 
by my trash can. That that went everywhere. That schmutz went everywhere. And it's not ever fully emptied. Will be full of rubbish. As Becco 1987 put it, they are rubbish. Having to wash or filter every time you vacuum is rubbish. There's no reason for it. A bagged vacuum, you stick in the closet and every few months you change the bag. Hell, if you have a lot of dirt, dust, you do it once a month. Still, not every time like you do with the bagless machine. Not to mention that these filters on a yearly basis usually cost way more than vacuum bags. The biggest misconception with stick vacuums is that they're lightweight. They're actually quite heavy. That's about four or five, almost five pounds. So that goes up to six pounds when we pull it and down to about four pounds when we're just holding it. The V11 is by far the heaviest stick vacuum I have tested ever and the largest. How heavy is it? Well, it's about 6.6 .6 pounds in your hand. Now, let's, let's think about that. 6.6 .6 pounds for a stick vacuum. It's supposed to be lightweight. So are the new V11s any better? No. The outsource, or obese as I call it, is actually 8 pounds which is the weight of a couple full-size upright vacuums. So a full-size power nozzle is under two pounds, which means that a full-size vacuum has less weight in your hands than any of these stick vacuums combined. Let's talk about storage. So units like this LG and certain other models of vacuums, they have a base they store with which helps them store nicely. A lot of units though you do need to put a hole in your wall like this machine, this X20, and then you have to kind of store it and it makes it kind of awkward where you can put it. Um, also, most of these units, they don't stay up by themselves. In fact, I can't think of a single cordless stick vacuum that stays up by itself. Oh, well, the Mila Triflex might be the only one. Something like this cordless Henry, as you see, stores in about the same form factor and doesn't require a hole in your wall, which makes this a little bit more preferable. Another thing why we're on the Henry is having a hose like this allows you to get into places where you're just not going to be able to get in with something like this. As you can see, this is much smaller. Some people get intimidated by having a hose to maneuver, but really it does make life easier, and there's a reason why most vacuums have a hose. Now there are other machines, this Hoover is a great example, where it's a traditional upright format that's been shrunk, and it stays up by itself. I like this even though this machine is not particularly powerful. Alright, I wanted to elaborate. It's a problem with every single stick back that I've tested, which is maneuverability in terms of small spaces. Now, because your motor is here, like these, they don't tend to get under things like a traditional canister vacuum they can just swoop up and get under things a canister vacuum you're typically only dealing with 32 millimeters maybe 34 millimeters in diameter right here and for those of us who are in the united states and don't understand that trick that's an inch and a quarter where with these guys you either have to put them on their side which not all of them go on their side fully, so this one doesn't go on its side fully. But it actually gets under there enough. But something like the LG, the Dyson, or any of these others, uh, they just don't do that. Another issue, I've highlighted it quite a bit, is the way the swivel joints are on these. When you do go to try to push them under the bed, I'm going to turn them on their side, watch what happens. See how they move like that? And again, I've got video of the Dyson doing the same thing. So that means it's really impossible to get under something uh, and lie flat. 
I have all of these things lined up because I want to explain kind of the differences between something that's a standard floor tool. So this is the standard Vissel work floor tool that comes on a Mila or Henry or something like that. You can see it is wider than that. It is wider than that. You know, it's a common theme. So if you have anything more than an apartment or thousand square feet that you're cleaning, you might want a wider nozzle like a full-size vacuum. I'm using the zero G as an example. Why a thinner nozzle has its advantages in terms of getting in places. The reason these are narrow is not because of that. These are narrow because these machines lack power and making the nozzle narrow means you don't have to have as much power. A trick we've seen used quite a bit in the vacuum industry. So let's talk about if we're cleaning under or around something. With the hose vacuum, you can get in, add your attachments, and not have to worry about it being too deep. With these, they become quite awkward in your hand. Now, the X20 actually gets in the best because of the shape of it. It also has a ridiculously small bin. But one thing I noticed with the Dyson V11, V12, is it didn't have this little extension here, which meant it couldn't get in anywhere uh, without putting attachments on it. Well, what have we learned here today? Even the best stick vacuums really can't beat a traditional canister vacuum layout with something like a Henry or a Mila, even though these machines don't look as pretty. Stick vacuums can't replace your full size upright, but they can be handier than some traditional vacuums to have, though they're really no match for something like a central vacuum or a cordless canister. The other takeaway from this is don't believe marketing hype and always try before you buy for yourself. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, comment below. I love to hear from you and have yourself a wonderful day and thanks for subscribing to Performance Reviews.